This video is equally important for investors who have no accounting background but they want to invest in a company as well as for students who are appearing in different professional exams. In this video I'm going to discuss on certain things which you need to know before investing in a company. And how would you know that? By calculating certain ratios which we call market or investors ratios. If you're watching me for the first time, I'm the Commerce Specialist. Welcome to my channel where you'll find videos covering learning outcomes of various academic qualifications and professional certifications including life-changing business ideas and hacks. So let's discuss market ratios. So the very first ratio we need to understand and discuss here is book value per share. The formula is pretty simple. Total shareholders equity minus preferred equity divided by number of ordinary shares at financial statement date means in the numerator you will take the total shareholders equity and subtract the preferred equity that is preference shares and all. In the denominator you will have number of ordinary shares but do not take weighted average number of shares. These are number of shares at reporting date that means on the date you are preparing financial statements on that day how many shares the company had. So let's give this some numbers. Let's say total shareholders equity is 1 million and number of ordinary shares happen to be 100,000. So obviously when you divide you get dollar 10 per share. Now everybody can calculate this but what is important is to understand what does this dollar 10 per share means. $10 per share means if the company is to be liquidated at the date of the financial statements how much each shareholder will get. Each shareholder will get $10 per share if the company is wound up on the date the financial statements are prepared. This ratio is calculated usually by financial institutions uh, for companies who have mainly liquid assets. Book value per share is also used to assess merger terms obviously with some adjustments. The next important ratio you need to know is market to book ratio. Market to book ratio is very simple market price per share divided by book value per share. So we are assuming market price per share to be $40 book value per share which we calculated here is $10. So that gives us 4. Now as I always say calculating this is very simple market price per share divided by book price per share answer is 4 but what does this $4 means? So if you calculate market to book ratio for any company and the answer is more than one here it is four dollars this means that the market expects higher earning in future from this company so it's a great tool you know before investing into a company just calculate market to book ratio see how much it comes if it comes less than one that means the market the overall market does not expect this company to perform very well in future but if the answer is more than one that means yes the market expects higher earning for this company and obviously for the shareholders and potential shareholders of this company. Next important ratio you need to calculate before investing into any company is price earning ratio. We also sometimes call it PE ratio. PE ratio is the short form for price earning ratio. Formula is very simple. Market price per share divided by earning per share. I have written B here that is basic earning per share. Do not take diluted earning per share. So when you are calculating price earning ratio in your numerator you take market price per share and you divide it by earning per share which is basic earning per share. So if I take market price per share as before which is $40 and earning per share could be let's say 20 Okay so that gives me the answer of two dollars per share. We need to interpret this. We need to understand what does this two dollar means. This two dollar per share means how much existing shareholders are paying in order to continue to get the earning per share which is 20. In order to get 20 existing shareholders are willing to pay two dollars per share just to continue their EPS in future. If you look at it from another angle it also has some other meaning. Investors consider this $2 per share as an indication of what market considers to be the firm's future earning power. And let me tell you something very important. 
any company which is in a very high earning stage would definitely have a very high P ratio. So have a look at this. If you're comparing two companies, if one company has a price earning ratio of two and the other has five or six, that means the company which has a higher P ratio is expecting phenomenal growth and obviously phenomenal profits. Now the next ratio is very, very simple. Why? It is just the opposite of price earning ratio. We call it earnings yield, where instead of earning per share in the denominator, you put it in the numerator and market price per share you put in the denominator. So if I plug in the numbers, it is $20 divided by 40. So that will give you obviously 0.5. Earning yield of $0.5. What does this mean? Earning yield measures the income producing power of one ordinary share at the current market price. Okay, so one ordinary share has an income producing power of 0.5 at current market price. One of the important ratio to understand is dividend yield. Formula is very simple, dividend per share upon market price per share. And you can also like, you know, uh, calculate this in totality. That means total annual dividend divided by total market price for the share. It means number of the shares multiply the market price per share. But what do we get out of this? By why should we calculate this? This ratio is very technical. You need to understand why we calculate this and what information do we get out of it. Now this dividend yield, if I plug in the number, let's say dividend per share is $80 and market price per share is 40. So obviously this will give you $2. Now this is dividend yield. Now what information does dividend yield of $2 gives us? This can also be calculated in terms of percentage. Okay. The understanding of dividend yield requires some prerequisite knowledge. Please understand, let's say if the company makes this much profits, half of it they pay as dividend. The remaining probably they can reinvest into the business. So you need to understand higher the retention of profit, lower the dividend yield. Because if the company is retaining profit, they're not distributing as dividends. So obviously your dividend will be less. Dividend per share will be less. And as a result, dividend yield will be less. But you need to understand lower dividend yield does not necessarily mean that the company is not in a good shape there is a possibility that the shareholders have resolved that this time they're going to pay less dividend and they're going to invest the remaining, the retained profits into the business so that they can make phenomenal profit in the years to come. What if there are two companies? One company has a very high dividend yield. High dividend yield means they're not retaining profits. Most of the profits are distributed as dividend. So in the short run, shareholders will be happy. They're not retaining, that means they're not reinvesting into the business. That means the future of the business is kind of risky. Short term benefits are there that shareholders are happy, but what about long term success of the business? On the contrary, there could be one business which has a very low dividend yield. Low dividend yield means high retention of profits. High retention of profit probably are in reinvested into the business to make the future more stronger. So we can conclude that if there is low dividend yield and high retention of profit that and that retention of profit is invested wisely, then in future years, you may not see high dividend yield, but a higher capital gain. Because if the company is doing good, their market price per share will go up. And if investors are purchased the company shares today, looking at low dividend yield and understanding that low dividend yield means more reinvestment of profit and wiser investment of profit. So obviously in future, the market price of share will go up. So if you purchase a share today for $20, in future you can sell it for 60. So you can get a higher capital gain. So dividend yield may be low, but the, there could be high capital gain in future. I hope you have understood this concept. The next interrelated, uh, the next ratio to calculate is dividend payout. The formula is annual dividend per common share divided by basic earning per share. Let's suppose annual dividend as we have, uh, you know, calculated here is $80 and earning per share we have taken as 20 here. 
Okay, this ratio is very simple. It shows the percentage of income which is available to pay the shareholders. So when you calculate dividend payout ratio, 80 divided by 20, 80 is your annual dividend which I have taken from here, I'm assume, and earning per share I have picked from here. So that comes as four times, for example. What does this mean? This mean that whatever is your earning, earning is let's say $2, the dividend which you have paid is $8, which is four times. So it shows the percentage of income available to be paid as dividend. And obviously, higher the better. The next important ratio to understand is shareholders return. So when you're calculating shareholders return, take market price per share, ending market price means at December 31st or at the reporting date, minus the opening market price per share. So let's say uh, your market price per share in January was $20 and at the end of the year was 50. So 50 minus 20 divided by 20. So basically it shows a percentage increase. So if I put this into numbers here on top, ending market price per share is let's say $50. Opening market price per share was $10 and you divide by 10. So 10 minus 4, this is 40 divided by 10. So that will give you 400 times. What does this 400 times show you? This shows that your share price as compared to the beginning of the year, share price at the end of the year as compared to the beginning of the year has increased by 4 times. 400 means 4 times. If you want to calculate Total shareholders equity, do the same. Basically, ending price, ending market price minus beginning market price is capital gain. So what you can do is capital gain divided by beginning price, you will get shareholders return plus dividend. So that gives you total shareholders return. So let's assume I'm a shareholder. I purchased a share of a company at the beginning of the year for $10. At year end, the share price is 50. So what is the percentage increase? four times okay plus i also got dividends okay so now what is happening i am getting the capital gain i am getting dividend but what did i do to get all this i only purchased the share which means if i put the numbers here my capital gain is 40 and let's assume i got a 20 dollar dividend Divide by how much did I purchase a share for initially 10? So this gives me 60 by 10. So that gives me six times. So total shareholders return is six times. And what is this six times? Six times or 600 times as, per, as compared to what you invested. I invested only $10. At the end of the year, I got $40 as capital gain increase in the price of the share plus I also got dividends. In the end, the last one is EBIT, that is earning before interest tax, depreciation and amortization. So everybody knows how to calculate earning before interest and tax. This is basically also known as profit before interest and tax. Earning before interest and tax and profit before interest and tax. Also minus depreciation and amortization. So that amount, I'm just assuming that to be, let's say, 400,000 and sales to be 1 million into 100. That may give you 40%. So what does this 40% show? In the short run, when the company is aggressively growing, so EBIT, DA could be one of the measures to look at their success, which is around 40%. But in the long run, company needs to earn enough amount so that the company can cover depreciation expense, amortization, and all other non-cash expenses. In other words, in the short run, we are looking at profits. In the long run, company should make enough profit to support its capital spendings, capital expenditures. You know, when you buy non-current asset, it will depreciate. Certain non-current assets are to be amortized. And depreciation and amortization, both are expenses. So do we have enough sales to cover up all this? In the short run, you can calculate EBITDA 
as a percentage of sales and see how much you are making as compared to sales before paying any interest, any tax, any depreciation and before accounting for any amortization. So this is, this is a narrower uh, measure. But in the long run, obviously company wants to grow. So they should make enough profit so that yes, they should have enough money to pay the interest, the taxes, uh, provide for depreciation and amortization. So ladies and gentlemen, if you have any concerns and queries relating to market ratios, please leave a comment. Also let me know from which part of the world you are watching me. Uh, I really like to know where my subscribers are located. Guys, if you are not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe my channel. That's one way to show that you value my work. If you like this video, please share it with your dear and near ones so that others can also benefit. Thank you so very much for your precious time. Love you all.